Hello, my name is Sherilyn and I work here at Yoka Gao with our Liquid Analytical Products. Today, I wanted to talk to you about some of the features and benefits digital sensors, or what we call our Syncom sensors, have to, have to offer to customers and um, end users in general. Um, first, in a traditional sense, analog sensor, you would have a traditional analyzer and an analog sensor. The sensor will be in your process, it'll read your pH or P values, and it'll sing, send the analog signal to your analyzer. However, when you go to calibrate, you have to calibrate in the field. When you have to replace a sensor, if it's especially an integral one, you would have to unscrew the, lab, uh, unscrew the data, pl data plate, unscrew the cover, open it up. If there's any internal plates, pull those out, change the wiring. Obviously, you've turned off your power so you don't electrocute yourself. Put the new cable back in, shut it back up, turn it back on, and then you're good to go. However, digital sensors have a Modbus signal because it takes the analog signal, converts it to a digital, the output is a Modbus, and it allows you to connect to various different types of pieces of equipment. Here we show our recorders that Yokogawa has to offer, but you can connect to anything that takes a Modbus signal. One of the benefits of it being a true Modbus signal is that you can do longer cable runs. Before, we can only do about 60 meters was recommended because the signal would start to pick up noise interference, which would give you an inaccurate pH or ORP value. Now we can go up to 100 meters or 286 feet. Um, so the signal coming out, like I said, it's a Modbus RS-485. And we just wanted to take a moment and show you some of the capabilities with it connected to our GX and our FX. So first, let's start with our FX, since our FX recorder. What you need is obviously an FX recorder. Here, I show two sensors connected to it, and you need this interface box. It's an S8000. So it's simple, you have this box. You have Modbus coming from the box to your recorder, but then you also have your individual sensors wired directly in here. There are four sensors that can connect to one isolation box. This is needed because the signal needs to be isolated, not on the, it needs to be galvanically isolated, not on the uh, measuring signal, but also on the power signal. Okay, so now let's take a moment. I want to show you the FX by itself and its operation. Now since, be careful, I don't work with SL products, it's a little fuzzy. But here you can see pH value, ORP value, temperature value, and what we've also selected pre-programmed in here are the glass impedance values and your reference impedance values, and obviously those are important for A, your coding, so you see when you need to clean, and B, your reference impedance, when your, your junction's getting clogged, that needs to be clean, or poisons, your reference probe is dying. Here you can scroll easily through, up or down, forget which way it goes. You can have trend graphs, you can have bar graphs, and then you have uh, the capability to connect four sensors to one FX based on the amount of math channels and comm channels that you've selected when you bought your model. Um, very simple, very easy to use. You can either program, if you're familiar with these already and you have these recorders at site location, you can program since it's Modbus, you just tell you what register to look at and you can program yourself or we can do it here at the factory for you if you would like. So that's the FX, that's a small one. Remember, you can only connect four sensors into one FX. So now let's go over to our GX. This is our GX20, uh, it's a bigger one. They do have a GX10, which is more the same size as the FX that we just looked at. But here, based again on what you choose when you build your Mahler code or what you already have, the expansion packs that you have, you have the capability of doing over 10 sensors into one GX. So the benefit of this, again, you still have your interface box that you're familiar with, but you have the capability, like I said, of connecting um, 10, 16, 20 sensors into one analyzer. So it allows you to take multiple places throughout the whole plant into one analyzer. So let's look at some of the features in this display that it has to offer. Okay, here I wanna show you, I only have two sensors connected and we've already pre-programmed it for up to four sensors to be connected. However, again, we can always do more and you can either program it at site location or 
we can do it here for you. But here we show you really big screen. You have pH1, your ORP1, your temperature, and your RH. For those of you that don't know what RH is, pH compensated ORP. And if you easily, hopefully it'll work for me, <laughs> scroll up, you see pH2, pH3, it's got high values because obviously there's no sensor connected to it right now. However, with the um, GX, you have standard graphs or, or that's the digital graph, I'm sorry. Or you have a trend graph that you can see and you can set these ranges. So, okay, you're only interested in between 7 and 9 pH, you can shrink it. And each color codes up to uh, the trend graph here is matching, you know, with a color code for what it's reading here. So you can set these so that they're ranges that you're particular so it's not just a straight flat line. You also can look at it, again, as bar graphs, or you can have a generic overview. These are the four sensors, and then you could dive in. These are more custom graphics that we're showing here. If you don't like the traditional white background and black lettering, you can do others if your lighting needs it to be. But this instrument has different capabilities. You can also, oh, let me get out of that. You can set high and low alarms. Um, for whatever you want. You can easily edit it, turn it on, turn it off, and when you get an alarm, it'll give you an arrow code flashing on the display. So it's a lot user-friendly. Um, obviously, your trend graphs, let me show you those real quick because this is something that traditional analyzers don't have the capability. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can write on there, you can circle something, so you have different capabilities. You can erase what you wrote, that, or clear it all. You can do different color writings if something needs to stand out. So this is something traditional trend graphs and analyzers don't already have. So again, the FX, or the FX and the GX have multiple different features. I don't work for our recorder division, so I can't show you all the extra bells and whistles, but I know there are a lot of other uh, features in there. You can take in, obviously, more than just a pH or a P sensor. You can take any other device that has a signal coming into it. So if you already have one or if you need to record your data anyway, they're a great feature. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of features that we can have someone here that actually knows the product better than I do tell you about it. But this entire time I've been talking about these digital sensors like you know what we're talking about. So just in case you don't already know what a digital sensor is, I'm going to take a moment. We call our digital sensor CINCOM sensor communication. And what it is, a lot of people have them, it's your traditional analog sensor. You can see this is the exact same sensor as this. The only difference is this top portion. And what this is, is it's a micro, mini microprocessor. So it's basically taking the analog signal it reads, converting it to a digital signal. Everything that you used to have in your analyzer is now in this little sensor chip on the top of it. Um, and basically what this allows you to do is again, no more out in the field taking time to clean them, calibrate them, you know, what used to take you 20, 30 minutes depending on how intense, if you have to suit up, depending on your area classification and the environment you're in. Now all you do is you take one of these pre-calibrated sensors that's sitting in your instrument shop or in your lab on the shelf and take it out, take the one out of the process, swap it out. So whereas before you may have had 30 minutes worth of cleaning and calibrating, now you have maybe five to ten minutes, depending on how intense the installation site is, um, where you have to be out there. And then you can take the sensor back to your lab or instrument shop and calibrate and clean it when you have time to do it. So there are benefits as well. You're thinking about probably asking yourself now, okay, but in my analyzer, I did all the calibrations at site, and you're saying I have to go into a lab or an instrument shop and do it on a computer, basically. Um, or you can use an analyzer. In the, in the instrument shop as well. You don't have to use the PC software. But I want to take a moment and show you the benefits of the software and some of the things the software has to offer you now. All right, so the software is going to be what we call our CINCOM PC software. And you'll have a little folder when you download it. And I put it in a folder on my desktop, but you'll have an icon like for a shortcut to it. And when you launch it, it opens up like this. And here we have two sensors connected. One of the benefit of the software is any alarms, you can see it shows that, okay, I've got two sensors connected. 
and we have them connected via the in, an interface box and sensor and cable. But only one is actually active because I keep getting this error message. So it attracts any serial number and any errors that it may have, any failures that the sensor may have, it'll let you know right away. You'll obviously also, if you have it connected to an analyzer or um, a recorder, you'll get that as well, the sensor's malfunctioning. But this log keeps track of all of that and it keeps it by unique serial ID and it tells you the error code and also in the background it shows you the date and timestamp that that occurred. So go back to the sensor management side. Here you see your one sensor. In here you get obviously what it's reading right now, the pH, the ORP, the temperature, these are live values. If you select performance, you get more information. Right now there's no calibration data for it, um, but you have what it is currently, the slope, the asymmetry potential, the ORP value slope when you did a calibration, the temperature. And over here you have a sensor wellness. It's kind of like a bar graph like your battery on your cell phone. Um, when it's good, it's obviously high, and as it ages, it decreases over time. Another thing is you'll get, obviously, like I said, your measurement values for your ORP values that you're seeing. Right now there's no calibration data because I haven't done a calibration on this sensor because it's just a demo um, sensor that I pulled out of inventory for this right now. We'll go back. One of the other, oh, not back, that shrinks it. Uh, where's back, there it is. Uh, one of the other features it has is you can configure your sensor right here at your PC. You can change it from a pH and ORP to just a pH, just an ORP value. What you can do is you can export these settings you can save the file on your desktop, and then if you go and you want to set up other sensors just like that one, then what you would do is you would connect the new sensor, import that file that you just saved, synced it to the sensor, and it allows you to easily um, reprogram, you know, set up other sensors very quickly. One of the other things that these sensors do track is your high and low pH values that it sees over its lifetime how many um, steam sterilizers as well as high pH points, um, high, I mean high temperatures that it will see, um, you know, over X amount of time while you're using it. So if your process runs normally up to about 80 C and the sensor fails, we can look and go, okay, it failed because whether you saw it or not, the sensor saw a temperature of, you know, whatever it may be, we'll go to the extreme 270 C over sh for a long period of time. However, the main benefit of the software is the actual calibration data. Here we have a, a viewer that will list up to 100 unique serial IDs in the um, software at one time. Once you hit 101, what you have to do is you can either just simply delete it or you can save this file, this ID, um, all the data with it to your PC. Um, you can export all of this information right here um, to your software and you can keep the file for later for history purposes, obviously. And then what you can do is you can go in and re-import that sensor data files at a previous, at a later time. So it allows you for tracking purposes and history purposes to not lose anything. Normally when you would do a calibration in your lab set or in your um, field, you would take that data and you would have to download it, restore it, or store it, or transcribe it into some sort of report, whether it be a Word piece of paper sitting in a binder somewhere or an Excel file on a computer somewhere. However, if doing this, it allows you to track it all by itself. But it would show you all of the pH history, ORP calibrations, temperature history, it'll show you all that data and then you can export it, create a PDF, you can create Excel, you can print a report. Um, so it allows you to keep track of that. Another feature that this has is you can do different accounts, user accounts that are password protected and different um, user limitations. So maybe one person you want them just to be able to do a calibration but another person you want them to be, be able to have full functions of down, uh, deleting or, um, you know, editing, uh, downloading, uh, not deleting, deleting serial numbers and whatnot or creating new people. So you have different, four different level variations that um, capabilities in the software that you can do. 
So you can see that with digital sensors, you have various benefits that you didn't have traditionally with an analog sensor. Um, and obviously, you've got the calibration software you can do. It has all the reports. You no longer have to do those manually. And everything is starting to go if you've got a DCS or if you've already got a recorder and you're not using the capabilities of the analog 4 to 20 outputs of the analyzer to control anything, then why even have an analyzer there to begin with? So it's technology is starting to slowly move to the digital communication world. Um, obviously with the data acquisitions you still have the capability of adding and going to something else that has a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So we just wanted to take a moment and show you the capabilities and show you what we're calling our SIN station package because these are data or these are DAC stations and these are SINCOM sensors so SIN station. So thank you for joining, thank you for watching. Hopefully it was quick and for you and informative for you. If you've got or if you want more information and you want to contact us, feel free to visit us at www.yokogawa.com slash US. And there's a contact section in the top right hand side and you can either contact the office directly or your local sales representative.